Town Station, AM 1220, KHTS. This is Randall Winter with Randall Winter Construction and Ricardo Corrales with Ricardo Heating and Air. Thanks for coming for here, Ricardo. Thank you, Randy. Good to see you. So we've been talking about thermostats, heat exchangers, different types of heating units. Um, sometimes I'm on a job and we have two floors and they have one AC unit and then sometimes they have two. Can you tell me some of the pros and cons of having two versus one, first of all? Well, the uh, <clears throat> the pros are that you don't have to uh, worry about two systems, you know, repairs, uh, maintenance. But they're not as efficient, are they? Um, well, they're the same efficiency, I'm sure. Um, but what you have in a two-story home, you do need to have two controls, or if you can, two systems, of course. But um, because you're always going to be warmer upstairs, and you're going to be colder down below on the first floor. So you're always going to have that battle where it's too cold up uh, downstairs, too hot upstairs. You're never going to be comfortable. So can they zone it, or what can you do? There's a there's a system uh, that that splits your one unit into two, um, and it's called zoning. Okay. Uh, and what and what gets done is that um, you we install automatic dampers that you can open and close automatically, and there's a control board that controls everything you know the system the dampers mm -hmm. and then also you get another thermostat for the either upstairs wherever you're missing the thermostat upstairs or downstairs and then you can uh, operate the system independently so oh. if you only need heating upstairs or I mean downstairs because you're warm upstairs then it only works for downstairs you're oh. only heating your downstairs and then in in the in the summer obviously when you're hotter upstairs on the second floor you just turn it on for the second floor your air conditioner and it just works for upstairs it doesn't cool the downstairs so that way you can control your temperature better if, if you have just one system okay so two units really would not necessarily but is or is Necessary. Would be an ideal way to it go. It is better. Right. But it's too hard, believe me, right, to change it once your house is built. A lot of built. homes are built with one system, one unit, on a two-story level house. Yeah. And it's, it, it's very expensive to add a second system to divide the, the house. And then if you do that, the one unit that's already there is going to be too large for the, the floor that it's going to service. Wow. So you actually need to change both. <clears throat> you need to add two systems, brand new systems, and, and, and size them properly. Well, I do know that the requirements and balancing and all the, the city, county, state, federal government has has changed and become more stringent with our environment. Um, but with that change, they have some sort of rating. Can you tell me a little bit? What's yeah, it there, well, the air conditioners are rated by what's called SEER rating, which is S-E-E-R, and stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Rating. Um, the standard efficiency rating is 13, which is wh what we're allowed to install. That's the minimum we can That's install. That's the minimum, but it's definitely, you know, higher than a 10-year-old unit out there. Um, and it, and it goes from 13, it goes 14, 15, 16, 18, uh, up to 20. I mean, there's some units that can even put out 21 uh, SEER uh, rating, which is really, really good. I mean, it saves you a lot of energy uh, consumption. It costs more money. Now, they did change the Freon. I don't know. I'm getting a little sidetracked yeah, here. But when you when you go up in Sear, do you go up in different Freons? Or no. So um, it's the same Freon. It's the same Freon. We're, we're actually at the end, towards the end of facing out the old refrigerant, which is the R22. A lot of people know it by Freon. Um, we're coming to, we're replacing it with a new Freon label R410A. And some people recognize it by Puron. So that's your new refrigerant for your new air conditioning and, and systems. And they change that because of the ozone or something? Right. It's, okay. uh, it's uh, ozone friendly. Uh, the old refrigerant depletes the ozone. This new refrigerant is not. And that's be one of the things I think people need to know out there. Sometimes the Freon 
tends to escape because it's under pressure, right? Right. Especially when it's working. So if you have even the smallest leak, eventually you're going to lose some Freon. It's going to go in the air. So if it's going to go in the air and you want to do the right earthly thing to do, is you want to step your unit up to one that is Puron rather than the old Freon. That's correct. And it's not something a homeowner is going to do, though. No. no you have to be specialized and licensed to do this. Yeah, because I know we just... We're adding a room over there. I got uh, our concrete guy over there, Mr. Bragdon, taking out uh, the, the slab for me. We're putting a new slab in for a new addition, and you had to move the compressor for me. And I can't move it because I, if I cut those lines, what happens? Then you let all the gas, the Freon out. All the Freon goes up in the air, and that's expensive, too. That's expensive, and that's against the law. Right. So we don't want to do that. So you, you sent your guys out there this morning. Yes. They put a special pump on it right right to recover the reclaim the, the refrigerant and you put it back in the tanks and store it and store it we re remove the air conditioner and then come back at a later time and put it back in. okay so that's really a, really an important thing for you homeowners out there uh and, and part of the checkup that you do ricardo or you guys do is when they go out there is they check oh Thanks, Kyle, for turning that air down. You're wasting energy here. Um, <laughs> you need an automatically controlled one. The uh, one of the things your guys do is you, they have a, a a measuring tool, if you will, to determine how much pressure and how much freon is in. Yes, the, we have uh, gauges that check the pressures in the air conditioning units, and we also, of course, take you know other measurements, um, uh, amp draw for the compressors, and your temperatures at your ducts um, to see make sure everything is in within range where it's supposed to be at okay one of the other things I remember we used to do is what you know people will say I don't feel any air coming but more and more on the more efficient units you don't get that gust of wind anymore the idea is to be more efficient it has to be just like pushing cool air out more subtly like it just got subtle here um, so that it's not wasting as much energy, right? Right. And, and I'll tell you, Randy, one of the main issues in the industry that we've been having for a while is that a lot of contractors that are mainly not licensed contractors do not size the duck to the room properly. So that's when you get a lot of gush of air coming through because it's either too large or if some rooms are not getting the uh, uh, sufficient amount of airflow to it, it may be too small. So you really need to have your ducts checked to make sure they're sized properly. If you're having airflow issues or, or balance issues in your home, then it, it more than likely it's, it's your duct work. Mm -hmm. So that should be checked, you know, periodically also. Okay. Well, thanks, Ricardo. Ricardo's Heating and Air. I appreciate you giving us all this wonderful information about our our heaters and our air conditioners. This is Randall Winter with Randall Winter Construction at Santa Clarita's hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS.